everybody, Sabrina here, and today I want to talk about my makes of 2020 so far. So I didn't get as much done during April as I thought I would. I found that I was having trouble finishing any sewing projects after work because I had already spent the work day in my sewing room as my home office. So since I've started kind of moving around and spending time in other rooms of the house a little more, I have found myself wanting to come back in here and sew after work. So I've decided to include a couple of garments from previous months. Um, that's just because I haven't really talked about them in depth on my channel yet. So I hope that you enjoy them. And without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so the first make I want to talk about is actually the make that I finished most recently. These are my pants from Simplicity 8749. It's a Mimi G pattern. And this was my first pair of pants that I ever, I've ever made. And I'm actually, I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out. There's a couple things that I think I would like to change in the next version of these pants that I decide to make. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with them. So one thing that I noticed is that these ended up being really long for me. I think that's partially because I'm only five foot two, but also because I ended up making the pants a couple sizes too big. Um, I was really nervous that the seat was going to be too tight so I did go a couple sizes up to compensate for that and then that ended up making everything else a lot bigger than it needed to be so I think in the next version I'll go at least a size down maybe two so here are the Mimi G pants I'm really happy with how they came out there are a couple things that I'll probably change in the next version that I make but for the most part I'm really really pleased with them I know I'm gonna wear them a lot especially um, in the springtime they basically feel like pajama pants. Now this next pattern is the McCall's 8040 Emmy top and I was very pleased with how this turned out. Um, this was a pretty quick make. I had it cut out prior and then I finished it in only maybe two, maybe three hours just because I was dilly-dallying and I wasn't trying to push too fast through it. But I'm really happy. I made view C. I got to use these buttons that I'd been hanging on to for a while in my stash. Overall, I really enjoyed sewing this pattern. It went together very well. Pretty simple. I think even beginners wouldn't have a problem with it. The one thing that I'm a little unsure of is how I feel about the larger sleeves. I absolutely love a poofy balloon style sleeve and I think they're gorgeous. I think I would need to edit this sleeve a little bit though to get the amount of fluff that I would like. Either that or I'd have to interface the whole piece. But I just don't think that this portion needs it. I just think this needs a little more fabric. In it. But this shirt, as you can probably tell, it's very fitted. It has like princess lines here and it has the same lines in the back. And so it gives a very fitted silhouette without trying too hard. I mean, it's not tight on me by any means. I have extra fabric, but just the way that the seams allow the fabric to flow makes for a really nice fit. So if you are interested in that type of shirt, I really think you're gonna love this pattern. If you haven't heard of Rosary Apparel, I'll go ahead and link her channel down in the description box. A while back, she put this pattern out for free, so you can still get it from searching, I think it's called The Perfect Dress from her channel, Rosary Apparel, and you can print it out. Um, it's in a copy shop format. Any kind of company that prints patterns out in large scale um, should be able to print it for you. But I have made a couple of these dresses so far and I am completely in love with them. I just, I love the silhouette. I love how easily they went together. This is a great beginner's dress. The skirt is just gathered. Really simple dress to start with. It does require a zipper. I believe you can do either invisible or exposed. It's just your own personal preference. Um, but I absolutely love it. So here is the dress full length. So I will wear this with or without a petticoat. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day and I'll show it to you with a petticoat underneath it in a moment. But one of the other great things about this dress is that it has pockets. I absolutely love it. I actually use this pocket pattern in a lot of my patterns that don't already have pockets in the dress, but great, really simple dress to make, to practice. And this is the dress with the petticoat. It just adds a lot of that flounciness and floof. I absolutely love it and I wear it all the time um, and I'll put on my second version now so you can see how that one looks as well. So this is the second version of my rosary apparel perfect dress. 
I wanted a little bit more of a winter version of this dress. I did make these both in January. So I wanted a dress that I could actually wear at the time because in Montana it is very cold in January. So a sundress is not necessarily the outfit that you will be wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. So I made this one out of a cotton a cotton blend. Um, flan it's kind of like a flannel. It's not as soft as like a snuggle flannel, but just like a flannel shirting maybe, cotton flannel shirting. And I really like it. I love the metallic thread going through the plaid. Um, this is from Joanne Fabric as well. Most of my fabrics are from Joanne. Um, but I'll go ahead and stand up and show this dress to you. I will say that the first time I made this dress, I think it probably took me about five hours from cutting it out to actually sewing it because I had never made a dress like this before, I guess. And I wanted to um, kind of test out the pattern, make like a wearable muslin, which is what that floral dress was that I just had on. But this version probably only took me three hours from cutting to finish because I had just made one the day before and it was really, um, it really flew by the second time I made it. So I highly recommend making it again if you're a beginner. This is a great pattern to start with. And then, you know, if you want to make a couple more, they come very easily after you finish the first one. So I'll go ahead and stand back and show you guys what this dress looks like on. Right, so as you can see, this one is a little longer. I think what I did with this was I just added, I think I added maybe not quite a foot, not quite a foot to the bottom. I actually had um, just enough of this fabric left that I didn't have to cut it. So once I had done the bodice and the sleeves, I just trimmed an even amount underneath, used the whole length for the skirt. I just gathered it up and turned it into this. And it was perfect, um, perfect length. It's kind of mid, mid calf. So a nice winter dress. I still wear it with tights underneath um, just to keep my legs warm in the winter, but I don't have to once it's a little warmer. It's just a really, really good length for somebody of my height. Um, and then also this one has pockets as well. Very, very spacious. Definitely enough to hold my phone or, you know, keys, wallet, whatever you have. Um, love those. Again, this is an invisible zipper in the back. And then just the two darts in the front. Two darts. You know, I said two. So there's two darts in the front here and then two darts on the side here. So it's four darts total. Really, really happy with this dress. Again, I wear this one a lot as well. It's hard not to because it's so comfortable. The next thing I wanna talk about is a set of tools that I actually made last month. I've wanted to make a Taylor's ham and sausage roll for a while now. I was able to find a free pattern online, so I figured I might as well give it a try. So here is my Taylor's ham. I absolutely love the way this guy turned out. It's a really nice cotton um, flannel, really soft. And since it's really light, I figured it wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be concerned with it bleeding onto anything I was ironing with. I actually got to use it a little bit today when I was getting ready for this video and it works like a charm. It's a little, I mean, it's not perfect, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> it's a little lopsided on one side, but um, when I had to sew up the, uh, when I had to sew up the side, it got away from me a little bit. So not a big deal. Still works nice and tight. Um, I went ahead and just filled this with regular fabric scraps. So I took a bunch of my fabric scraps that were too small to do anything with, and I chopped them up really small like confetti, and I stuffed these full of them. So there's all sorts of fabric scraps in here, which is another reason why it's kind of lumpy, but I'll take it. It works really well, and I'm really pleased to have it in my toolbox now. And to go along with that, I made a sausage roll as well. So this is for um, when you're ironing sleeves or honestly, I'd probably use this for um, ironing like the hems of pants as well. So you don't get that uh, those side creases. I don't really particularly enjoy the side creases. So I think this will be very, very helpful in my sewing toolbox as well. I was not paying attention to pattern matching when I made these either. So they're what they are, but I love them a lot. Again, this one was filled with fabric scraps as well. Just really easy, easy pattern to do. I think it, I did this in an afternoon. So I think it only took me maybe an hour to put them both together. Uh, the thing that took the longest that I'm not counting in that time was making all the filling. I did not realize how much filling these things needed. Um, yeah, I had to stop about halfway through filling up the Taylor's ham and make three times as much filling as I had made 
initially for both of these. So if you're going to make a Taylor's ham and or sausage roll and you think you have enough filling, I would just double check that you do. Uh, a lot of people fill it with like sawdust or wood shavings. I wanted to do that, but we were already self-isolating, so I didn't want to um, go into town if I didn't have to. And I have a ton of fabric scraps, so it wasn't a hard thing for me to find in my house. So I went ahead and did that. It did end up a little flat because the fabric can only stretch so much. I think darts definitely would have helped make this a little rounder, but this is gonna work great for what I need it for, and I'm really happy with them. Another few projects I made during the month of April were a lot of baby items. I have three friends at the moment who all had babies within the end of March to, um, to now, and I made a lot of burp cloths and a lot of just receiving blankets, swaddle blankets, and I even tried out making some little baby pants. After cutting them out, it only took me maybe a half an hour to put them together. So I'm, I'm definitely a fan of baby clothes. They go together really fast. They take no time at all. So I'll probably be making those more in the future on my channel if you guys are interested in that. So I made the pants and a little matching headband. I don't have them with me because I've already given them to the new mom, but I do have the leftover fabric and this is what I made it out of. It's a stretchy, it's a cotton knit that I got from Joanne Fabric a while back. I don't remember what I originally bought it for, um, but it's just so soft. When I felt it, I knew I had to have it. And these little uh, cherry blossoms and bluebirds are just so cute. Um, I have seen her in the pants and they are darling. So um, I'm thinking, because I definitely have enough fabric here, I might make a like a full onesie outfit long sleeve with the footed bottoms. I just have to find a pattern for those. So some of you may have seen this next make in a previous video I did. This is my version of the 1973 Simplicity Pattern 6099. It's a wrap dress. I actually got this pattern from my grandmother's stash. Uh, I went through it a few years ago when I was at home and um, picked this one out because I thought it was beautiful. So I went ahead and gave it a shot. I loved the version I made. And I loved it so much, I decided to grade the pattern up to make one for my best friend. And I made a video on my channel earlier in the year on that make. Um, so this is my version. I'll go ahead and show it to you guys full length. It did make a cameo in that previous video, but I figured I'd show it here since I did finish it in February, I think. January or February. So I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Now this dress is pretty long. I left it long because it was my intention to wear this with heels most of the time. It's a very summery, um, lightweight, flowy dress. And I imagine I might wear this to a summer wedding or something like that. But I really like the style. It's a full wrap dress, so it comes all the way around to, the, to my opposite side and then all the way over here. And there's actually a snap. There's a snap here to hold it in place and then the sash is mostly just for aesthetic, just visual aesthetic and a little bit more security. But I am over the moon with this dress. This definitely sparked my sojo back when I had originally sewn it and I am super, super pleased to have this in my wardrobe. I'm excited for it to be warm enough for me to wear it because again, for some reason this year, I decided to make all my summer clothes in the month of January and February and I can't really wear them yet because it's just too cold. So this is the dress. I'll try to walk around in it so you can see. This fabric was also from Joanne Fabric, just one of their silky prints. My last few little projects that I made in 2020 are right here. So I just made a video on making reusable tea bags. I absolutely love these little guys. They're just super simple little reusable tea bags. Um, holds enough tea leaves to do an entire teapot versus just one cup, which I appreciate because I rarely make tea by the cup. Usually I do it a teapot at a time. Another garment I worked on in the month of April was actually this dress. Now this was kind of my wild card plan. I wasn't sure if I'd get to it or if I didn't want to sew if I wanted to do something a little more creative. And I went ahead and tried my hand at draping my very first dress. And this material, it's 100% polyester. So I've had it for a while. I got it like $4 for four yards or something like that. And it is really heavy. I mean, this stuff, it drapes. It's so beautiful when it drapes, but it is so heavy. And I can't figure out how I would drape something like this without using a fabric that hangs the same way. So I kind of was just messing around one afternoon and I threw this on there, I pinned it on, 
and I fell in love with it and now I don't want to take it off. So I have not used my mannequin in almost a month because I don't want to take this off without getting it somewhat to stay like this so I can continue making the dress out of it. So if you guys have any suggestions, what I've started doing is just hand sewing down each one of these little strips. Anytime there's a fold or a gather or a pleat, I'm sewing it down by hand and I've gotten I think one whole strip done but if there's another way or a better way to do this please let me know in the comments below I've never tried to create something this way and I would really like to get my mannequin back but I'm too stubborn to take this off and lose all the work I've done unless it's what I have to do I've taken pictures of it so I can try to recreate it but I'm just really pleased with how the cowl falls and how the waist looks so um, if I can keep it, I would love to. So if you have any recommendations or thoughts, please leave them below. I would really appreciate the feedback. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions or requests or comments, please leave them below. And make sure to like this video if you enjoy this kind of content so I know what to make in the future. If you haven't subscribed yet and you'd like to join the Sewing Circle, please do so by subscribing to my channel. I try to put new videos out every Thursday. I really appreciate you stopping by, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.